This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Automakers are adding cameras, microphones, and other sensors on cars, but where's the best place to put them? Gentex, which makes rearview mirrors, says that the inside rearview mirror is the perfect place. That puts everything in the driver's line of sight, and they can easily be installed on the assembly line in one operation. In 2026, the European Union is mandating driver monitoring systems, and Gentex says it can incorporate all that into the rearview mirror. Gentex is also working with the Israeli company Adisky to add thermal cameras for automated emergency braking, since most AEB systems don't do very well at night or in bad weather. In the U.S., NHTSA says that 75% of pedestrian fatalities happen at night. Currently, NHTSA mandates that AEB cameras have to see in 2,000 lux, which is a measurement of illumination and is the equivalent of daylight. But NHTSA is going to drop that to only 0.2 lux, which means those cameras have to see in the dark, and that means automakers will need to use thermal cameras. Adisky claims to have the smallest thermal camera available and says it already has an order for them from a Detroit-based automaker, which means it's either GM or Ford. VTOLs, or vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, could be the next big thing in mobility. Automakers such as Honda, Hyundai, Mercedes, and General Motors have all expressed an interest in getting involved, and so has the supplier Scheffler, which makes the electric motor for a VTOL developed by an Austrian company called Fly Now. It's a one-passenger, battery-powered electric VTOL with enough room behind the passenger seat for a roll-on luggage. Or it can be configured to carry a small pallet of cargo. And it's designed for wireless charging so that the VTOL just has to land on an induction pad to recharge the battery. Tesla already announced that its next generation car, which some people are calling the Model 2, will use a 48-volt system for low-voltage applications. But Tesla isn't the only one. Clarios, which is the world's largest lead-acid battery maker, says it's working with other OEMs to come out with 48-volt systems too. In fact, it's working on what are called multi-output voltage batteries, where one battery can be used for 12, 24, or 48 volt systems. And Clarios is moving well beyond lead acid as well. It already has LFP and LTO batteries, or lithium titanium oxide, and it's also working with an unnamed partner to develop sodium ion batteries for low voltage applications. And it thinks that ultra capacitors are gonna play a role in situations where a car needs a quick burst of energy, like when adaptive suspension needs to keep a car flat while cornering. It's one thing for a car to activate the brakes, change the steering, or trigger the airbags once something happens. But what if a car could predict what's going to happen before it tries to avoid an accident or protect the passengers? Then it could react even faster, and that's why Magna is working on a system that relies on sensor fusion to predict 300 milliseconds ahead of anything that's happening. Walter Sackle, a senior director at Magna, says, sensors are reliable, but they can't predict what's going to happen. Cameras can see what's going to happen, but they're not 100% reliable. And info from the cloud can help, but it's also not 100% reliable. Even so, he says when you fuse all those different systems together, you can reliably predict what's going to happen. We've reported on how China became the biggest exporter of vehicles this year, but now car imports to China are plunging. In 2017, China imported nearly 1.3 million vehicles. Last year, that dropped to 880,000 units, and in the first half of this year, it was only 338,000, a 23% drop. Part of the reason is more automakers have moved production to China. 
Another is that the government is really incentivizing EVs, and just about no one exports EVs to China. Over half the imports are SUVs, and 90% of the imports are from luxury brands, which suggests that Mercedes, BMW, and Audi are losing the most in China. And here's another example of a legacy supplier transitioning to the EV world. Tremec, which is known for building transmissions for high-performance models like Corvettes and Mustangs, developed a drive unit for high-performance EVs. The two-motor unit weighs 243 pounds and produces 600 kilowatts, or about 800 horsepower. It's even compact enough to fit in the same space as a single rear-drive motor, like the one in the Mustang Mach-E, which weighs about the same, but produces less than half of the power. Tremec plans to introduce the drive unit in 2024-2025, but only for low-volume specialty vehicles. It wants to ramp up to 10,000 units per year by 2028. And a quick programming note before I sign off, there will not be a new Autoline After Hours this afternoon. But that's it for today's show. Thanks for making Autoline Daily a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. At Tejin Automotive Technologies, we combine world-class composite materials expertise with cutting-edge designs. Because frankly, there are better ways to lightweight vehicles. So lighten up with Tejin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility.